Did you know that the modern day swimsuit is a very new invention? Hello and welcome, I'm Maria from So Through Time, and this time we're taking a look at the history of the bathing suit, at how it changed through time, and what materials it used to be made out of. For most of history, women either bathed or swam in the nude or in their shift or chemise like I'm wearing here. This was made out of linen and it was the, basically their undermost layer of clothing. This one specifically is from the late 18th century, but the basic shapes are slightly different throughout history, but the idea is the same. It's basically a linen dress made out of rectangles and triangles. One could swim in their regular shift, or they could have a specific one for swimming that could be checked or sometimes dyed with indigo for added modesty. But because swimming and bathing were considered non-sexual acts, and they were usually done either in women-only spaces or amongst family members. People in general just weren't overtly concerned with propriety as far as their swimming attire goes, up until basically their start of the 19th century. But when it's swimming in public, women in the 18th century would typically wear their caps as a sign of being properly dressed for the public eye. Beach going and swimming in the sea became hugely popular during the 18th century, and by the 19th century, bathing machines became the standard for women going in and out of the water, so they didn't really have to worry about whether their clothing was revealing or not. Then as we get into the second half of the 19th century, the swimsuit or bathing suit emerges. This is a garment specifically designed for swimming, unlike the previous bathing shifts or dresses. These consist of bloomers and a tunic, and an oil silk bathing cap to protect the hair. These started first appearing in the early 19th century and were considered an essential part of the swimming costume by the time the actual swimsuit came around. Just like modern day bathing caps, it was designed to protect the hair and keep it from getting wet. The bloomers were fashioned after the reefer and dress bloomers. They were at first long ankle length, but soon shortened to just under the knee. They were intended to preserve body modesty better than just swimming in a dress, which is understandable because during the Victorian era, you start seeing men and women swimming together in public beaches. And again, the tunic length of the upper body garment is also intended to hide the female form, especially once the bathing suit is wet. And yes, beach shoes and stockings were considered an essential part of the costume. This bathing suit in particular is from 1880, but the basic idea of them stays the same throughout the Victorian era. The only difference is in the shape of the sleeve and in the length and fullness of the tunic. These bathing suits were first made of wool fabrics, specifically worsted and flannel. But by the late Victorian era, cotton appears as a cheaper alternative. While black and navy suits were the most popular throughout the Victorian era, most likely due to the fact that those wouldn't stain or discolor with salt water. Bright colors, especially red, were also frequently seen in bathing suits. And somewhat surprisingly, white was a popular color, especially during the natural form era. So 1876 or 77 to 1882. The next major change in swimsuit fashion starts in the 19-teens, and by the 1920s, the jersey or knit fabric swimsuit becomes the standard. No longer made out of woven fabrics, the fabric has a lot more give to it and has a lot more potential to be form-fitting than would have been previously possible and still easy to swim in. Already as early as the 1912 Summer Olympics, we see women's swimsuits that are completely form-fitting. But modesty laws throughout the 19-teens and 20s would prevent most women from wearing these in public, at least legally. But that didn't stop fashion. This was the standard shape for swimsuits both sold and for patterns made for the home sewist. This pattern is from 1924. These knit fabric swimsuits could be made out of wool, silk, or cotton. And while we have a huge amount of surviving wool suits, and they seem to be the most common knit suits in the 1910s and in the 1930s, looking at mail order catalogs and sewing patterns from the 1920s, cotton seems to have been the fiber of choice for the 1920s. These type of swimsuits often come in bright colors or navy or black. And the swimming cap is largely replaced by a turban, or just a silk scarf tied turban style. And though modesty laws in many places still required women to cover their legs with stockings, you often see pictures of women not wearing them. 
By the 1930s, these modesty laws are largely forgotten and either not enforced or completely overturned. This era's swimsuits are much more form-fitting and much more revealing than were previously thought possible or decent. Some cleavage showing and very low-cut backs were very common, as well as different sorts of cutouts revealing parts of the midriff or even the hips. This suit is a commercially made, store-bought one. For a do-it-yourself version, there were still some sewing patterns, but by far, knitting patterns were more popular. These suits were most commonly made out of wool, but sometimes you do see also silk ones. And by the mid-30s, you start seeing lastex also being introduced either by itself or into a wool suit. Its properties are similar to modern-day elastane, but it is made out of a rubber instead of a plastic fiber. While in the 1930s, different sorts of cutouts were common, in the 1940s, the first truly two-piece costumes become fashionable. And because of the wartime rationing on both elastics and wool, swimsuits made out of woven fabrics became popular again. These are mostly made out of cotton or acetate, sometimes rayon. They could have a button closure like mine, or they could even have lacing on the sides, like the Coal of California swoon suit, all in the attempt to avoid using elastics, while still creating a functional and comfortable swimsuit. And in the 1940s, a lot of swimsuit patterns come with a cover-up skirt, and they start to be seen as okay to wear out in public outside of a beach setting with that cover-up skirt, oftentimes combined with a little burlero jacket. By the late 40s in the US and by the early 50s in Europe, the restrictions on use of elastics has lifted, and this creates the fashion trend of completely sheared bathing suits. These are typically made out of an acetate or nylon taffeta or sometimes cotton, and they are typically sheared all over or sometimes the bust area is left unsheared. Mine is a vintage original piece made out of an acetate taffeta. And though separate bikini-style swimsuits exist, by far the most popular is a one-piece again. The 1950s also sees the first synthetic fiber knit fabric swimsuits. These are much less stretchy and are a lot thicker material than modern-day Lycra swimsuits. But they have enough give in them to eliminate the need for closures. These typically have built-in bra cups to give that 1950s pointy bust shape. During the 1960s, the swimsuit styles stay largely the same as they were in the 1950s, with the suits designed to give the appearance of a slim frame. They often had built-in panels that would slim out certain parts of your body, and also they had bust support built into them, but typically in a less exaggerated shape than in the 1950s, and becoming softer towards the end of the decade. And then as we head into the 1970s, this is the era of the modern bikini. Though the bikini had basically existed at least since the 1940s, this is the era when the bikini started to look like a modern day bikini. Like just looking at the garment, every single modern person will recognize this as a bikini, whereas the earlier garments can be confused for something else. And though other styles of suits existed, the crocheted bikini is by far the most iconic 70s look. These were often homemade and typically made out of mercerized cotton. In the 1980s and 90s, modern day Lycra swimsuits become the standard. There is still some fun experimentation going on as to what sort of texture that Lycra swimsuit should have. Like this one has a almost terry cloth like texture to it. There's also a huge explosion of different kinds of styles available from different sorts of bikinis to one pieces to one pieces with all sorts of odd and weird interesting cutouts to them. But possibly the most iconic of all the swimsuits of this era is the Baywatch style one piece swimsuit. Though, of course, that Baywatch red one is the most iconic one. Mine is a vintage white one. Both the iconic Baywatch suit as mine have the typical high cut leg of this era with fairly minimal back coverage, but typically not in a thong style. This era is kind of the last stage of the evolution of the swimsuit, where we work towards the modern day swimsuit. 
And while the materials mostly look and feel the same as modern day swimsuit fabrics do, there was still a little bit of tweaking as far as making the material goes. And because of this, unfortunately, a lot of the especially earlier 80s, but also 90s swimsuits deteriorate really fast because the plastics themselves, unfortunately, don't last the test of time when they're long exposed to light and oxygen. And because of this, unfortunately, even museums are lo losing a lot of swimsuits. And for the last swimsuit style in this swimsuit history, we have the early 2000s. This era for swimsuits is very much like fashion in general, basically a remake of the 1970s, but just with a lower waistline and with modern day plastics. By the early 2000s, they had solved most of the longevity problems with Lycra, creating the modern day swim fabric that we can still buy today. Around this time, the word microplastics for the first time came into the public consciousness. And there started to be talk about whether we should be using alternative materials for swimsuits rather than plastics. But for better or worse, the modern day plastic Lycra swimsuit was here to stay. And while the rise and shape of the swimsuit might have changed since these days, the conversation still goes on with new, more UV-resistant Lycras being invented, and also Lycras made out of second-hand plastics, but with no perfect solution in sight. And here they all are in order. Do you have a particular favorite that you enjoyed the most, and maybe even would like to see come back? If not as a swimsuit, maybe as something else. Or do you maybe prefer modern day swimwear? Let me know in the comments down below. Or was there maybe a particular fiber that you found was surprising to see in swimwear. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit that like button because it really does help out in this universe. And share the video if you want and do all the things. And if you don't follow me already and you'd like to do that, please hit that subscribe button because I'd love to see you again next time. Bye.